Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is a Steiner Optics M8XI. Steiner's M8XI is a one to eight second focal plane magnified optic in a market that can sometimes seem inundated with different varieties and different flavors and different preferences of magnified optics. Steiner obviously has to be in the game because they are an optic company. I'm generally a huge fan of Steiner's glass. They have really good light transmission, really good clarity, and a wide variety, depending on magnification and specific purpose you're gonna get, of available reticles that I also like. One thing in the past with Steiner that I've generally not been a huge fan of is their uh, illuminated reticles tend to be a little anemic, even though the glass itself has very good light collection, light quality. This was something going into the M8XI that I was worried about because it is a one to eight, which means it's going to fill those CQB distances, if you will, which I consider to be one meter to 25 meter, as well as reaching out and using the optic at extended ranges. Because it is a second focal plane, I have the same reticle for all magnifications. I don't actually have to zoom in or out or use a brightness set or anything like that to be able to use it at those close quarter distances like you see with some of the first focal plane reticles that are out there. However, one of the problems that I run into with some, certain optics with second focal plane reticles is the reticle is thicker than it needs to be once I go out to my maximum magnification my reticle actually starts blocking what I'm trying to look at. So these were my concerns initially going in. Now if you've just done a quick google on Steiner's M8XI you've probably seen that it is really expensive. For this price I was expecting amazing performance like performance that is incomparable and it should stand well and above the competition of optics in the one to eight category because I'm paying, depending on which optic you want to compare it to, because I don't do comparisons, at least on video, uh, whatever optic you would compare it to, it should be able to perform exceedingly well because it can cost two or three times as much as something else in the same category from another manufacturer. The M8XI has a 34 millimeter main tube, which is pretty standard. You usually say 30 or 34. Uh, I generally find that 34, mil, mil, 34 millimeter main tubes, in my experience, generally have better light collection, light transmission. However, that's not necessarily always the case because it's not just body diameter that gives you that great light transmission. Eye relief was pretty reasonable throughout the review. I found that I could run the M8XI like I would run just a red dot, as long as I just have that practiced preferential placement for cheek weld or chin weld, depending on the, uh, the uh, mount height that you're gonna use, uh, the M8XI worked just as well in those close quarter distances as it did zooming out and engaging targets at longer distances. The adjustments are 0.1 MRAD, which uh, if you're a fan of metric for shooting, then that's gonna be right up your alley. It's gonna make the math doing the transition in your head very easily if you're going to dial in versus hold over. And because it goes out to eight power, you can reach out and touch targets at extended distance with this using the DMR-8i reticle from Steiner, which is kind of a Stein, that's their reticle. However, you'll see some familiarities between this reticle and some of the other reticles that are out there. So you should be very familiar uh, with your overall design, subtension line, behavior, and measurements that you're going to use. Now the M8XI is heavy. It is 26 and a half ounces. That is a very beefy scope. And if you look at the scope itself, you can see that even the turrets seem to be overbuilt. They're not captured turrets, which we do see, tend to see some companies kind of gravitating in that direction for their their lower magnification optics, your 1 to 4s, your 1 to 6s, your 1 to 8s, even your 1 to 10s. Not everybody is doing traditional turret adjustments. There are a lot of them are going captured because it's generally can it's generally not a thing, although some people do it, myself included, depending on what I'm doing with the gun, to dial in instead of holding over. The whole point of the reticle system to begin with is to be able to hold over, know your math, get your holds, uh, know your dope, if you will, uh, so you don't actually have to dial in adjustments. But if I'm going to be shooting at a known distance, and I'm be saying I'm be shooting at 250 varied sizes targets, but that's going to be my set distance, I would prefer to dial in 
uh, especially if I've got my dope handy right there with me, just make those, those quick adjustments. Uh, if I'm shooting further than that, depending on what rifle I'm gonna run it on, um, uh, if I'm gonna run it on a 308 or something like that, I may be shooting any further with it. Uh, so being able to dial in easily without having to take caps off is a nice feature, provided those caps are going to be reliable. Now for the review process, I ran it on my 12 inch Lantac Raven. Uh, 556223. So that's what I was going to be using it on because I generally don't put one to eights on larger calibers, although there's exceptions to that rule as well. Um, so for the review process, I'm going to be shooting it on an SBR and testing it from uh, close quarters as well as reaching out to those extended distances. Now, my review process for almost everything firearms related, including firearms, is 2,000 rounds. One of the most recent changes I've made to the process, at least for video purposes, is I've moved my 500 burndowns to the second 500 round. So I get 500 rounds once I've got the gun zeroed of getting familiar with the optic. My main reason for doing this is I'd hate to sh I'd hate to zero something, do the burn down, and then break it on the first drop test. And because um, people asked and I kind of responded uh, over the past couple years, pretty much everything optic related gets a drop test these days and the same drop test, which is shoulder height on a hard surface such as paving stone or concrete, depending on which range I'm using. Now, the reason I do the drop test isn't because I think people are gonna drop their guns so much as I'm trying to see if the optic can handle a realistic uh, shock uh, impact that's gonna be consistent from test to test to test to test to test. Of course, I make no claim to it being scientific, but I don't think I've gotten any shorter or taller, so it's staying roughly the same for every drop. So getting right into the performance of the M8XI, it's a good optic as far as light collection goes, light transmission goes. Just like I feared, the reticle brightness is just as anemic as I feared it would be. I even took out the battery, put in a brand new Duracell 2032, and I found that the brightness the brightness just wasn't as bright as I would have liked it to have been in daylight. Now in failing light, twilight, low light, it's awesome. Uh, really good brightness, even when pushing a weapon light down range, I still see that red glow of the reticle. But using it in daylight, especially shooting into the sun, if the sun's behind my targets, reticle brightness was a problem. Now. If I'm shooting out to two, 300 meters, the reticle brightness isn't really that big of a deal in most situations. But when using it on one power at those closer distances, that glowing reticle really helps me center my point of aim, similar to how I would use a red dot. So having a brighter reticle is something that I wanted. For the cost of the optic, you think they could have given me two or three more brightness settings, but someone decided that, that wasn't necessary, and that someone was wrong. In low light, Twilight and low light, light collection is exactly what I would expect from a Steiner optic. So at least in regards to the, the optic quality, the M8XI quality in that regard, uh, it still has the same kind of light transmission and, and light collection that I would expect from a Steiner optic. So the glass is really high quality, really, really clean glass. Uh, so clean in certain lighting conditions, I could even see the different colors of thermals when shooting on the deck. Like in the prone, I could actually see my thermals and make out the beautiful colors that they sometimes present with when the light hits them just right and you're not using a $20 Walmart scope. So glass quality is excellent. Over the first 500 rounds, I uh, went from one meter, like I said, all the way out to 250, uh, getting a really good feel for the overall performance of the optic. Adjustments are very easy. Going from magnification settings are great. Your switch view has a, has a pronounced nub on it, so you don't have to worry about adding an additional device if you really don't want to. Turret adjustments are solid. Uh, reticle knob is great. Reticle brightness, not so much. Kind of already touched on that. Then we get to our first drop test. Just because of the design and how this thing tends to be, um, turrets are huge. Uh, which is good for, for easy adjustment. You don't have to really pinch on it. You can just grab on it and manhandle it. Uh, but the optic is more back end than front end. So I was concerned with that, just the design uh, when it comes to the drop. But I found out the first drop, everything was good to go. And then I got into the burn down. If you're not familiar, the 500 round burn down is 500 rounds as quickly as possible to see if that accelerated rate of fire causes me to or allows me to notice any issues that I wouldn't see with the same 500 rounds over a much longer period of time because sometimes frequency identifies issues that longevity doesn't. So here's your burn down.
I'm generally not super worried uh, about a scope's performance or really any optics performance during the burn down. What I usually look for in burn downs with optics is flickering, fading, or any kind of other visual issues that may develop as heat starts to transfer to the optic itself. Because of the the nature of the optic and the fact that it's mounted very high above the receiver, that heat wasn't something I was necessarily concerned with, although it has caused op caused issues in the past with other optics, at least things that I could notice. But first round to last round, uh, scope performed great. And then it was time for the second drop test. And that's that. And that is pretty much the end of the review because my super expensive M8XI is broken. I'm really disappointed. I'm disappointed because I have optics that cost a quarter of what this thing cost that survived the drop test and continue to survive the drop test. Not going to do a comparison, but you've seen some of my other videos, some of the other optics I've dropped, uh, and I've got other optics that I'm currently evaluating right now that again are a quarter of the price of this thing, and they are outperforming it in almost every way, if not every way. Uh, if I was just going to use the drop test as a benchmark, I can't understand why anyone would spend this much money. Now, this is coming from someone who is a huge believer in Steiner performance. I am super disappointed in this 1-8. to eight. I would not recommend this optic to anyone, not just because of the fragility, but the fragility tied to the price. Um, I don't know what the intended market was, although Steiner's intended market is generally law enforcement and military, and this scope seems to be in keeping with that. Uh, sure, my test is a little bit on the extreme as far as the drop test goes, but there were other issues with the scope that also made me not really care for it. The biggest one that I should already kind of point it out is the, the, the available reticle brightness settings leave a lot to be desired. The reticle itself is fine, light transmission is great, overall features and adjustments are cool, uh, but I've got a reticle that doesn't get bright enough, and I've got an optic that couldn't handle two drop tests where, as I said, and I'm going to repeat it again, optics that cost a quarter as much, provide the same level of performance, um, survived multiple, 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 multiple drops. Now, generally what happens in situations like this, for my own edification, if nothing else, is I get the optic either repaired or I buy another one, and I start the review all over again. I'm not doing that with this optic, so this is definitely just a sample size of one. You're not going to get an update on optic number two, because I'm just done with it. Uh, the glass clarity is great. There are other optics in the same category that weigh less, um, have a smaller footprint, and have already proven themselves to be more durable. So. Do I really need to shop for another brand? I mean, this optic costs more than my first car did. Uh, and I generally don't harp on price because I feel like things generally are priced what they need to be priced with a little bit of branding left or right of the price. Um, but I just don't understand why this thing's so expensive. I really don't, especially considering uh, how many other optics out there in the same category cost half or a quarter as much and provide at least, at least, the same degree of performance with the same degree of features, or I should say the same features, that you're going to get from this optic. So I kind of feel like... <sighs> I don't know, maybe they threw a dart at a wall with numbers written on it and, and they came up with the MSRP. And you can find them a little bit cheaper than MSRP, but you're still paying more than what you'd pay for a comparable optic. So my advice to anyone who's considering this optic, if you absolutely have to have the Steiner name, then obviously you're going to buy it. My advice would be buy two or maybe even three optics from another company that provide the same degree of performance uh, and that way you've got three optics for three rifles versus one rifle or i'm saying one optic for one rifle uh yeah i just i don't get it man um so this is this is definitely not going to be something i'd recommend to anyone unless you absolutely have to have the steiner name and i'm leaving that on you but i would not include this optic if someone's asking me hey what's a good one to eight or what's a good uh um lvpo um this this one's not getting mentioned I'm Eric Allen with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.